Hello everyone, back tuning into today's video, going to have a look at whether it's 8 to 10 days in today's video and this will take us into the start of January, I think we go up to around the 6th of January uh, with this update. So uh, it looks as though we're going to be getting much colder air plunging into the east of Europe as we go through to the end of the year, into the start of the new year. I think we'll be seeing uh, winter really digging in across Russia and eastern, southeastern parts of Europe. Now how far west this cold air bats is going to be the big question. I think it will probably get to Germany. Where it gets any further west than that uh, is uh, uncertain at this stage. But it's certainly not beyond the realms of impossibility that this cold air could get as far west as us and uh, give us a bit of a taste of winter at some point through the first week of January. It's not out of the question. Um, probably fairly low risk, but the possibility is there at any rate. We'll need keeping an eye on over the next uh, few days because it will be a huge change on what we've had so far this winter. So I'll show you all the detail on it in a second, but before I get on with that, just to say about the ads, so since you're right, all the basic ads, well, I think have a browser widgets, click through links. If there's any articles that you're interested in, thanks very much for doing that. This video out of most pages, which open up in content, you watch them, they'll close back up again, and it's helping to pay uh, for the website. And just to say thanks very much for tuning in on this Boxing Day, uh, and I hope you're having a lovely time. The historic video uh, yesterday, Christmas Day's historic video, seems to go down very nicely uh, for the winter of 85, 86. It's a 40 minute epic. It is now on its own page here at Gauss Office. It will be kept on the website indefinitely. So if you haven't watched it yet, you've still got plenty of time to watch it, or if you couldn't watch it all in one go on your Christmas day, because it's a pretty long one, um, then uh, you, you can find on its own page there's a button uh, that says Winter 8586 here on the home page underneath this weather video. So just uh, click that and it'll take you to the page where the uh, 8586 historic video is. It's looking at that freezing cold February of 1986. I think it was the coldest month since uh, 1963. And we haven't had a month colder than that, actually, since February 1986. So it's a very, um, very interesting video from a cold uh, perspective. Do check it out if that's what you would like uh, to do. Right, let's get on with uh, today's video for Boxing Day. And we're going to start off with 500 with our height anomalies. We've got the east of the earth here on the uh, top. The GFS is on the bottom. Of the chart, 500 millibars, 8,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere with high pressure, low pressure being moved around by a jet stream running above. Red is extrapolating to high pressure, blue to low pressure. So, what we see is that we've got this big ridge here sitting up to the northeast of the country on both of these uh, models. Um, big area of above average heights, which is high pressure across uh, Scandinavia and extending into the west of Russia as well. It's, it always gets very interesting when you get high pressure there because model uncertainty becomes much more unreliable first of all um, uh, the models don't know how to handle uh, these uh, big ridges sitting across western Russia and into Scandinavia uh, that's plunging much of Eastern Europe into uh, winter because we've got this deep trough underneath the ridge here across eastern uh, parts of Europe that's a cold trough with very cold air entrenched uh, within it. Now, to the west of the Europe, we've got fairly strong jet streams still coming across the Atlantic, and that's keeping us basically unsettled, certainly up to the new year uh, anyway, but that jet stream comes up against this ridge to the northeast and sort of splits with some of the energy going up to the north, some of it going down to the south, setting up that trough in the east and the southeast of uh, Europe. So we get a bit of a split in the jet, and uh, as I say, it's not beyond the rounds of possibility that this ridge across the northeast of Europe could back far enough west if the jet stream eases off just a little bit more. It could back far enough west and bring this cold air that will be sitting across central and eastern Europe into the west of Europe and we may get uh, a bit of a plunge of winter sometime through the first uh, week of January. It certainly needs to keep an eye because there will be a big change on what we've had uh, so far this winter but there is a lot of uncertainty about how far west this cold air is going to come. Uh, these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So the red line here is the 30 year temperature average in terms of the upper air temperatures. Significantly above average still as we have been uh, throughout uh, December. Dates on the bottom of the chart of course. So this is the 1st of January just here. By which time we are seeing a drop in the temperature. I think the temperatures are going cooler through the first week of January. There's nothing definitively 
severely cold in that ensemble uh, at this stage. Except maybe this one outlier member just here, this green run, uh, which does go a bit cold, down to minus 10 and 850 HPA. And possibly this rusty brownie coloured uh, line just here, which is another ensemble member that's maybe going quite cold. But overall, most of these ensemble members are keeping us within the Atlantic driven air. If we have a look at Berlin, though, I'll just show you the ensemble for a little bit further uh, to the east of us. And you see there, we do get several uh, members of this ensemble going really quite cold uh, through the first week of January. Again, dates on the bottom of the chart. So, looks like winter will be plunging into central Europe. It's definitely, I think, going to plunge into eastern uh, parts of Europe. Probably will back far enough to Germany. Very scattered within that uh, Berlin ensemble, but I think it'll probably get to Germany. Certainly in terms of below level continental air, anyway, even if the upper air temperatures aren't all that cold. Whether this gets any further, <coughs> excuse me, further uh, west of that is going to be uh, the big question. These are the temperature anomalies for the coming week. So this is going from the 26th of December today through to the 3rd of January. Most of Europe still looking uh, milder than average. Not as mild as it has been, but still the anomaly through to the end of the year is a little bit milder than average. Notice it's beginning to turn cooler, though, across uh, western parts of Russia. I would expect this will turn significantly colder across central eastern parts of Europe over the next few days. So if we look at this around Monday, Tuesday, we will look at it around Monday, Tuesday, I think this chart will look very much uh, colder than that. It'll be one uh, to come back and compare to. The precipitation anomaly is looking a bit wetter than average in the north and west of the UK. Many western and southwest parts of Europe drier than average, drier than average in the east of Europe as well. And there's the uh, high pressure over Scandinavia that's going to be developing back into western Russia, bringing drier than average uh, precipitation anomalies for them as well. So the all important generic charts. Now before we uh, have this, uh, we are going to have to worry uh, more about gales and severe gales uh, through the course of next week. So this is the GFS chart for uh, the 30th of December, next Wednesday. And you see you've got very tightly packed ice bars here across the country, so I think we will be at risk of further gale force winds uh, with low pressure in the Atlantic. Bringing up this southerly, southwesterly flow, and that's developing warm air affection, WAA, which is where warm air pushes up into the pole and that inflates this ridge here across Scandinavia and western parts of Russia. So very often before we get these easterlies across Europe we do get a spell of very mild southerly winds taking mild air into the Arctic which then promotes the ridge uh, across Scandinavia and western Russia. That's a classic sort of uh, signature to preclude uh, a colder easterly. New Year's Eve looks like this. We bring this uh, strong westerly flow through across the country. Uh, so I think it'll still be unsettled, certainly up to New Year's Eve, with bands of rain as well. There's that ridge sitting across the northeast of Europe. Uh, we go through to New Year's Day, still in a westerly flow. This is a bit cooler. The air is coming from Greenland. It's not cold, but it is cooler. Uh, probably sunshine and showers for New Year's Day. Upper air temperatures by New Year's Day shows the extent of the cold. These uh, are uh, uh, dew points, sorry, show me extent of the cold across central and eastern parts of Europe. Bitter, bitter cold air there, getting as far west as Germany uh, because of that ridge that's sitting across Scandinavia and West Russia. That is a very, very dramatic change on what's gone on across Europe through the course of December. Uh, we go out beyond uh, the New Year, so this is to the 2nd of January, and low pressure is still coming in off the Atlantic, but this ridge across Scandinavia is getting stronger all the time. It's turning the winds a little bit to the southeast, even uh, for us, so it would be starting to feel a bit colder at that point. Uh, certainly the third again, the ridge taking over Low pressure coming in from the Atlantic, coming up against that ridge. More bands of rain probably across the country, and they'll be slow moving uh, as well because they can't exit to the east of us as normal because of this ridge uh, blocking their progress. This is how we look on Monday the 4th of January, and low pressure is deepening in the Atlantic, so an 
active system is coming in, but notice the winds are backing into the southeast uh, now, so we're probably bringing in colder, low-level air at the very least, probably not a cold upper air temperature, but uh, on the surface, probably bringing some colder air in from the southeast, and the low pressure sort of stalls across the country. Now, this isn't at all far from a snow event, actually, around the 4th, 5th of January. It's not quite right, but very subtle adjustments will start to bring this uh, really cold air in from the east. We can see uh, from the upper air temperatures that that uh, cold pool is lurking there to the east of us. Uh, so, again, very subtle adjustments would see this low pressure stalling within cold air, uh, producing uh, a snow event. Look how cold it is across many central eastern parts of Europe. Severely cold air is there with the dew points uh, from Germany eastwards really really cold and you see the temperatures at six o'clock in the morning on tuesday the fifth of january which is 10 days away but uh we're seeing temperatures forecasting to be as low as minus 10 across germany minus 14 across poland in cold and that further east in towards ukraine and then on into western russia we'll be talking about middle months of minus 15 to minus 20 so a really severe plunge of winter coming into the east of europe potentially out in the west it isn't as cold uh, but even so it's colder than we've had it through most of December. We've even in the UK and Ireland temperatures at 6 o'clock in the morning on the 5th of January struggling uh, to get above freezing. Running out beyond that, the low pressures start to uh, die southwards actually on this latest run of the GFS. So again, we're not quite setting things up uh, to bring these cold easterlies in, but it's not at all far away from it. And uh, I really won't want to uh, be predicting the weather for the first week to 10 days of January based on this GFS. Uh, because although on its own terms, this is a mild run of the GFS. It would really only take subtle adjustments to place us in a cold easterly uh, flow. Having a uh, look at the east end of the now this isn't as bullish with uh, this cold air coming into the east of Europe. So for Wednesday the 30th, we've got this southwesterly across the uh, country, gales or severe gales midweek next week with bouts of heavy rain. That takes us through into New Year's Eve. New Year's Day uh, looking unsettled as well. A little bit of a transient ridge here at midnight, so not too bad as Big Ben chimes, but this next area of low pressure is running in through the course of New Year's Day, uh, bringing wet and probably quite windy weather as well. Notice the ridge is there across uh, Western Russia. It's not into Scandinavia. It's further away from us. So that's why it's not having quite as much uh, influence. Uh, we go through to the first week of uh, January. So this takes up to Monday, the 4th of January. We still keep these westerlies piling in off the Atlantic Ocean. We end up on day 10 in a northwesterly with the cold air really restricted to the north of Scandinavia and into western parts of Russia. But I think the southeast of Europe is probably a bit cold. Let's have a look at the upper air temperatures. Actually, it's fairly mild in the southeast of Europe. So it's really Scandinavia and western Russia uh, that has that cold air uh, restricted to them. The GEM is always a bit different, but it does place us in an easterly through the first week of January. So this is how we look on New Year's Eve, bringing in these mild west to southwesterly winds that takes into new year's day as well uh, still mild as we go through to the 2nd of january with a low pressure system bringing outbreaks of rain beyond that though look at this the high pressure really inflates across scandinavia and western russia it's up to 1060 millibars by monday the 4th of january and that's turning the winds into the east definitively across the whole of europe and even into british isles we're getting these easterly winds coming in this is how we end up on day 10 uh, Tuesday the 5th of January with the GM uh, and we are bringing in a bitterly cold easterly wind if you have a look at the upper air temperatures you see there's a very cold severely cold air across central Europe seemingly heading our way on those easterly winds so we'd be seeing if that came off uh and i say the gm is always different it's not as good as the other two so it's a low probability probably only more than five to ten percent but if it came off we would be looking at minimums below minus 10 maximums probably below minus three and a lot of heavy snow piling in from the east as well. A real big freeze, that. Uh, now, as I say, it's a very low probability that it comes off like that with the uh, GEM. 
Um, but it needs to be kept an eye on this because uh, even the GFS, the ECM is, uh, is not close to anything particularly carved. But the GFS is close to it. It doesn't quite line things up correctly, but it's not all that far away from it. So uh, we've got to keep an eye on what's going on and I'll be keeping you posted over the next few days of course but uh, certainly the east of europe i think is in for its first real taste of winter whether this gets into the west of europe and affects us let's wait and see we've got a serious weather event developing across the northwest of england at the moment by the way so just before i go i think i'll just have a quick look at the radar picture from uh, the weatheroutlook.com so we'll go to the weather outlook uh, first of all and uh, if you haven't checked out weather outlook it's a fantastic site i use it all the time for the videos they uh, are very they very kindly allow us to use their chart so this is the home page of the weather outlook if you click radar pick uh, rain radar this will take you to the uh, radar and uh, we'll have a look at where the rain is and you can see it's in that zone again from ireland to north wales to northern england particularly and particularly northwestern parts of england southern scotland uh, so it's around cumbria lancashire those sort of areas again it's been on all night over christmas night it's been on all morning it's going to stay on through the afternoon the rainfall totals are really piling up i'm afraid some people are going to be flooded out uh, today across the north and it is very unfortunate uh, that this is happening over christmas but um um, there we go, the weather god's not being kind uh, to the folks in the north of England today. If you're at all worried about uh, the situation with flooding, uh, the, uh, check out the severe weather warnings at the UK Met Office website. Also check out the Environment Agency. We'll be hearing a lot about these uh, floods and the rainfall going on across the north of, the north of England over the next few uh, hours and days. I'm afraid. Right, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your Boxing Day. Uh, tomorrow we'll have our first little look at spring. And uh, if things are still looking interesting in terms of this easy, I may do a quick update on that on the blog, perhaps. All right, thanks for watching. and have Enjoy the rest of your Boxing Day.